When it was announced that John Frusciante was rejoining the Red Hot Chili Peppers, I'm sure I can speak for a lot of us when I say that, once the initial shock wore off at least, um, one of the first thoughts that came into our minds was, what is his pedal board going to look like? And now that the Unlimited Love Tour has kind of come and gone for the most part, you know, we got a new leg of it or whatever they're doing now to promote the return of the Dream Canteen as well, um, that's coming up in 2023 here. But we've seen his pedal board, we have lots of amazing photos of it. We even understand, for the most part, how everything works, how it's set, and kind of when John uses each of these pedals. But there's one part in particular to his pedal board that's really perplexing, and it's one that makes me scratch my head a little bit. And in today's video, we're gonna be discussing this system, and it has to do with the Moogs that are on his pedal board. We're talking about the Moog CP251 processor that works in combination with the Moog MF101 low pass filter. So let's get right on into it. All right, now first, let's talk about these two pedals and how they functioned on John's pedal board during the Stadium Arcadium era, for those of you who are unaware of this. So during the Stadium Arcadium era, John Frusciante had a bunch of these incredible Moog pedals from the MF line. They're just brilliant. I've owned all of them. They're, they're, they're ridiculous pedals. If you ever get a chance to play one, they're extremely special. And these pedals were kind of used in place of a lot of the synthesizers that he used in the recording studio during the Stadium Arcadium era. The 12 stage phaser Moog pedal was used during the By The Way era as well, and it was kind of the first pedal you saw on his pedal board from this specific line. Now, these pedals are fantastic, but they are a bit of a pain to power, and they're very large, as you guys can tell. They take up a lot of space on the pedal board. It's a lot of real estate space for one pedal that you turn on for one part of one song, for example, when we're talking about like the Murph. You know, John's the kind of guitar player that he wants to mimic what he does in the studio as best as humanly possible when he's on stage. And I think that's just something that's incredibly admirable, honestly, and just one of my favorite things about John is his care and how true he wants to say to his sound. And that's why his Stadium Arcadium era pedal board was just the, it was a spaceship. It was huge. So when it came time for John Frusciante, then if, when we fast forward to the Unlimited Love era, I was wondering, and kind of the biggest internal debate about his pedal board that I had before we'd seen it, is if any of those Moog pedals would still make the cut all these years later with so many new fantastic pedals that have come out since John's last stint with the Chili Peppers. But of course, we see that the Moog MF101, which is the low pass filter, made it onto his pedal board. Now we do know that this pedal is the MF101 low pass filter because of the layout. And yes, the layout is identical to the ring modulator. However, the ring modulator switches are blue and the low pass filter switches are this orange color. So there's no other Moog pedal that this could be. And the CP251 processor works with the Moog low pass filter in order to actually kind of get the, the get the pronounced effect. <laughs> So that effect is created by the combination of these two pedals. You have the CP251 again, which kind of controls the rate of the cutoff knob on the low pass filter, and then you can attenuate that as well. And essentially the low frequency oscillator with the, this combination and the way you set it specifically creates that warble effect that you get in Danny California. Um, yeah, that's as deep as I'm gonna get into that because it's, um, it's a bit of a hard to explain process without actually seeing it and having the pedals in front of me. But these two pedals, this is again what they're designed to do. Now, John Frusciante added them to his pedal board at the start of the Limited Love Tour, and I thought, Oh great, this is awesome. We're gonna see John using this effect again for Danny California. Now the tour has come and gone and John hasn't used it for Danny California once. I haven't seen any version, any performance of him where he's using it. She's a Yeah. 
And this is kind of even more interesting when you consider the fact that John Frusciante would actually sometimes use the WH-10 Wah pedal instead of these two Moog pedals for that part in Danny California. But instead of the limited love tour, he's elected just to go totally clean and not have any effects on for this part of the song. Now this begs the question of today's video, well if John Frusciante isn't using these two Moog pedals for Danny California, what is he using them for? Now, when I first heard Veronica off of Alone to the Love, I thought, I'm like, okay, obviously John Frusciante is doing his wizardry with those synthesizers, those modular synthesizers, to create that beautiful effect. But in a live context, it's not worlds away from the effect used with Danny California and those two Moog pedals. Now, that's another theory that I had, and we saw him on his pedal board, and I was like, okay. Is he going to have it set to kind of be the same effect and just use it both times, or is he going to choose one over the other? Well, the tour is come and gone, right? And they haven't performed Veronica once. So there is no time in any performance, any footage I've seen, where I could sit back and think to myself, that's the Moog MF-101, that's that low-pass filter going, that's that specific sound. I personally haven't had a moment where I'm like, oh, that's what that is, and that's what I listen for when I watch all these concert footage videos. I'm listening for, okay, that's probably that. Okay, yeah, yeah, that definitely sounds like he's using the Big Muff now. Okay, that's the DS2, you know, that's the SD1, whatever it is. I've never had one moment during the tour where I thought, okay, that's those Moog pedals. So this is just a really interesting thing that John's done with this pedal board because, as I mentioned earlier, those two Moog pedals take up a ton of real estate space on his pedal board that already is pretty jammed tightly together. You know, he really can't cram anything else on the pedal board. I mean, when he added the knot right from Wilson Effects, they actually created a custom kind of um, riser for it. So it's kind of in between the first row and that back tier. And it makes sense, at least because too, the way he will tap dance and add that together with the Variac fuzz at the same time, the way it's set up, it's a very quick tap dancing sequence. So it was a really smart thing that they did. I'm sure Henry did that. It was a really smart thing to do. But in terms of real estate space as well, he really didn't have many more options as to where they could actually put that pedal. And as I mentioned earlier in this video as well, they're not the easiest pedals to throw on a pedal board also in terms of just their requirements because you need a ton of cabling to make this specific sound and set everything perfectly on both pedals. And then to power both of them, um, I believe they're off the top of my head center positive and they require a specific barrel jack size in order to actually power them properly. So it's just a bit more of a pain in the ass than you know most of your standard pedals are. So to have these pedals on its pedal board and to not even use them, is a little bit of, you know, it might have been a little bit more of a pain than it was worth. But this is where kind of my theory, at least, running theory at this time at least, is as to why John Frusciante has both of these pedals on his pedal board. And it's because John really cares about his sound and being as kind of, you know, true to the recording as possible. And he likes to have every option covered in case they throw a song that they haven't performed yet on the set list one night, he doesn't want to have to say, oh, well, I don't have those effects on my pedal board. I can't do that. Or give Henry, you know, hey, it's an hour before the show, but, you know, Chad's really keen on performing Veronica tonight. Can you quickly change the pedal board and throw on some effects so I can actually perform this song properly? You know, they don't want to do that either. And I mentioned earlier again that during the Stadium Arcadium era with his pedal board, that's kind of something John did, and that's kind of a philosophy he lived by a bit, which is, you know, let's cover all of the bases, have all the sounds there at my disposal at any given time, even if he didn't use them, they're there. And he has the ability to use them if and when he wanted to, if they threw a different song on the set list, for example, they're there. And that's what I think those two pedals are doing on this pedal board. I think that they're actually set for Veronica, but they just haven't performed that song yet, just the way the set list ended up working. It just never ended up making the cut, but in case it did, he had it set that way. And then John instead elected of, you know, instead of having an additional system with another low pass filter on his pedal board, he just thought to himself, you know what, I'm just gonna play it clean, no effects on it, and that's kind of the new way I'm feeling Danny California for that verse part. And there's one final part to this whole kind of Danny California verse conversation of John Frusciante using no effects that we gotta add in here. Of course, okay, he has the CP251 and the MF101, the two pedals that he needs in order to be able to perform that part properly. 
However, he also has the Line 6 FM4 on his pedal board. And Josh Klinghoffer actually used a specific function on that pedal when he was with the Red Hot Chili Peppers in order to perform Danny California. And you can get a very similar effect through the FM4. So if John Frusciante really wanted to have an effect and not add another Moog MF-101 to his pedal board, he could use the Line 6 FM4 and it's not the exact same effect. You know, with John, maybe he was like, I want to do the truest form of that effect possible, or he just decided, you know, I just don't need an effect for this part, I'm just gonna play it clean. And maybe that FM4 was discussed and they were like, hey, you know, Cling off or use this. Uh, oh, and sorry, over here. Again, we've got this line six thing, which is for, for very specific songs. There's the wobbling Danny California. Uh, yeah. Scared of uh, velocity sensitive. And then uh, from Throw Away Television. And if you guys have a line six FM4 at home, you don't need to run out and buy these two Moog pedals. You can just use that effect and do the same thing that Josh Klinghoffer did. Yes, it's not the exact same effect but it's extremely close and for what those two other Moog pedals cost now, it's definitely worth just doing it that way and plus it takes up way less real estate on a pedal board of yours and again, you don't have to worry about the pain in the butt powering issues that you're gonna have with both of those pedals. So, John Frusciante has a few options in order to perform that effect, you know, more than good enough on his pedal board for the Only to Love Tour, but he elected not to. So this is why I'm leaning towards it being set aside for possibly Veronica and just being a song that never made the cut, he didn't use it, but it was there if and when he needed it. So that is today's video. That's the whole discussion. I was thinking about this the other day and I was looking at John Frusciante's pedal board and I was like, man, you know, what is going on with those two Moog pedals? And here's me now rambling on for 10, 15, however long this video was about this effect. But I think it was something just worth discussing with you guys because we pretty much understand how the rest of the board worked and what everything was used for and when. But these two massive pedals, complicated pedals, just kind of were chilling the entire tour and really didn't see any use. And if you guys did hear something during the tour that you think could have been these two pedals, please let me know. Link um, it down below as well would be the ideal thing. And I'll take a look at it and we'll see. But, you know, we're looking for something that's kind of like that warble from Danny California or Veronica-esque sound. And... I personally didn't hear anything like that. And for John to use those two specific pedals again, instead of, you know, a newer option for that sound, really makes me think that he had something very specific in mind, but we just didn't hear it. So you guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. As always, please leave your thoughts in the comments down below. The comments just help the algorithm out and help promote my channel and the videos so, so much. So they're always greatly appreciated. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this discussion and love my John Frusciante videos as well. That helps the channel and just me out as well. Let's me know I'm doing a good job with the videos I'm making. And we'll see you guys on the next one.